let's go ahead and start using these game dev tools. And the first thing we're going to do, of course, is voxelizing. And I'm not going to just voxelize this piece. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And we'll go back up to our pieces zero. We'll voxelize all of these at once. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit tab, start typing in voxel. And you're going to see the only selection available to us is this game dev voxel mesh tool. So you can hit enter and then drop this down below. And then take your pieces and plug that into our, SO, our SOP voxel mesh. Now, while you're in Houdini, you're going to see a lot of stuff like SOPs and DOPs and SHOPs and VOPs. Um, in this instance, this is a SOP. It's a surface operator. Anything that's in the OBJ section here is going to be a surface operator. So that's why it's called a SOP voxel mesh, just in case you're wondering. So let's go ahead and select that so we get the parameters available to us and we'll make it visible as well by clicking that little blue icon there. And you see this is a result we're getting from our voxel mesh. And you're also going to see the parameters that have been exposed to us, the end user, are available up here. If you ever want to see how a node is constructed, all you have to do is just go double click into this and you can see here's all the nodes and you're going to see some stuff you're already familiar with, this VDB from Polygon, for example, we talked about and it's going to go through all these node hierarchies here and then from these they've exposed parameters that we're able to change so we don't necessarily need to dive in here. If you want to see how it's constructed, by all means go in here and see what's going on underneath the hood, but if we back out one level and we have this node selected, these are the simple parameters we have available to us so we can start making changes to that node network. That kind of functionality, by the way, like creating Houdini digital assets or HDAs and exposing program or exposing parameters to your end users is a super powerful thing. Uh, we'll get to that in a later video. But for now, we have our voxel mesh selected and let's start going through these parameters here. This first one up here is pretty self-explanatory. There's just presets. So we have the mid value selected. So if we take this drop down here and we go to low, you're going to see that's going to drop down the poly size, which of course means our voxels are getting bigger. And then if we go to high, we're getting, we're getting a much finer resolution mesh. In fact, if we get in here, we have to zoom way in to see the size of these triangles now. And in fact, if you look down at the lower right hand corner, we're looking at about 5.6 million polygons now. You're also going to notice when we're on high, let's say, oh, here's a good example. If we go down here to our little microscope arm prong things, you're going to see when we're on high, all of this stuff is separated out, so we're getting a lot more resolution. So when we, if we were to poly reduce from this resolution, we would be building in all of this detail in and around here. And even on the top of the screws here, you're going to see we would be reducing with that in mind. However, when we drop back down to medium, all of this stuff sticks together. And of course, low is even worse. It's creating basically a looser envelope. Well, let's say we want something that's not quite as detailed as this high result, but has more resolution than the mid result. How do we do that? So what we're going to do is instead of high, low, and medium, we're going to go to custom. And now we have a resolution slider. So we can just take this resolution and as we slide it up, you're going to see things start disappearing. That's because this is a voxel resolution slider. So just like we were talking about in the voxel demonstration, uh, if we're making the voxels bigger, the polygons are also going to be bigger and therefore less resolution. So let me zoom out just a little bit here. And let's just, uh, let's middle mouse click over here and we're going to go to 0.01 and we're just going to drag to the left. And you're going to see we're slowly starting to dial in the resolution that we want. Of course, we went to zero. So what we might need to do is click this one. Let's go to 0 0.001 and start dragging from the right. So here we are at 0 0.003. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And so now what we have is we're losing detail here. This is still separated. So you can just fine tune what you want this number to be. If we say make the 0.04. It's going to lose resolution and now they're all just barely encapsulated. If we go 0, 0, 002, this is a result we're getting. So you can just fine tune and dial in that precise number that you'll need in order to get you the envelope on the mesh that you require. Uh, looking around here, looks like everything's fine. So let's say, you know what, let's do a really low res version of this. So we'll go ahead and bake all this together. I'm going to change this to 0, 0.003 and let's do 0, 0.0035. There we go. So we've closed off all those holes there. Everything else is looking pretty good. So let's talk about another uh, couple of these options. The bounding box, bounding box relative we'll get to in a bit. This is going to come in handy later when we start using the for each loop. It's going to ensure that each piece that we have is going to get the same level of voxelization. Uh, that'll make more sense when we get there. Just below that, you're going to see adaptivity. If we just click that and move that up, you're going to see it's going to tessellate more in the places where there's surface changes. And this one as well, if we keep these numbers low, we're getting finer tessellation along those edges. So on broader surfaces, you're going to get less tessellation on more angle change areas or areas on your mesh where there's more drastic angle changes. You're getting a finer result. So you could use this adaptive to say, let's say 0.1 or 0.01. And then when we zoom in, you're going to see these broad areas don't have very much resolution, but we're really packing the resolution areas along these corners where it really matters. 
Making this value lower seems to kind of have diminishing returns, so we'll go ahead and keep it at that value for now. This dilator road is interesting. What you can do is you can start dilating this out. So if we punch in, let's say one for our dilate, it's basically expanding your mesh out. So let's go back down here to these arms. And let's say, you know what, by doing our custom resolution at 0 0.0035, we did close those holes. However, we're not getting enough resolution on these corners. So we can use this dilator road to get the best of both worlds. Let's turn this back down to zero and we'll go ahead and turn our adaptivity off for now. So again, by choosing this resolution, we've bridged those gaps, but we're not getting enough edge resolution on some of our objects. So what we're gonna do instead is we'll drop this down to 0 0.001, for example. So now we've got plenty of resolution along these edges, but now we've got uh, holes in our mesh that we wanna kinda get rid of. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dilate out to one, and that's gonna start inflating our high-res mesh to encompass more objects here. So let's go out to two. So we're slowly starting to close those gaps in there. And this could be fine too, if you don't mind this, but we'll go ahead and go up to three. And let's say 3.5. I think that got it. Let's go up a little bit more. All right, so we have our higher, higher resolution voxel mesh, but we've also inflated it out to grab more pieces, let's say. But now we have the high resolution mesh, but now we have this bloated version of our object that isn't very similar to our original high res. If we wanna see that, all we gotta do is we can select the pieces geo and hit the blue, and then here's our original. And then if we turn on, or if we just select this one here, so we have this one ghosted around, you can see if we made a game res out of this bloated version, it wouldn't bake very well. It's just too far away from our object. So what we gotta do is go back to this voxel mesh here, so we've dialed in the resolution we want, we've inflated it out to grab more pieces, but now we need to go to this next option, which is project back to original. What that's gonna do is take your high resolution mesh and then project that back to your original high res detail. And that's our result. So now we've created a nice sharp envelope with more resolution where we've eliminated some holes that we didn't like and then went back to our original shape. So if we poly reduce this now, the vertices would be very close to each other and we'd get a much nicer bake. Now, if you're getting some artifacts after you project, you can use this post smooth iterations here to say, let's just dial in one. And this will just run a smooth operation after the project to kind of give you a little bit less artifacting on some of the geometry. Another thing you can use is this sharpen feature. So if we turn that on, you're gonna see that it's looking at this edge tolerance value and then sharpening along those edges. So again, if we turn this off, you might see that your edges are getting a little bit looser. I think our resolution is high enough to where this isn't really affecting it too much, but you can use this to sharpen your edges if you're using a little bit of a lower resolution voxel mesh. But like I said before, but it looks like the resolution we're running at is not doing a whole lot, but this can come in handy depending on the type of object and the resolution that you're working at.